everyone. So today I've got the Makeup by Mario Master Mattes, the neutrals, the brand new, and I've got the original. I have never used either of these, so I'm going to compare both of them. I've been on the fence about buying either of them, to be honest, and I know I probably would have gone with the original. So I've just gone all in, I bought both, and I'm going to try two looks with each. Maybe you could help me decide which one looks best. And if you're new here, hi, my name's Hannah. I'm not a professional, just somebody who really loves makeup. And here on my channel, I like to share with you any looks, any product news, tutorials, anything at all beauty related that might interest you. So if you think that's something that might be of interest to you, I'd love it so much if you liked and subscribed below. That really does help my channel ever so much. And if you just comment below, it just helps, helps my channel to be seen, which is really, really helpful. And let's get onto this video. So the reason I didn't buy this last year when it launched, firstly I wasn't doing this on YouTube so I didn't need to do it for review, but also as a person who collects makeup anyway, I didn't buy it because I already had neutral palettes and I just didn't see the need for another one, but I did see so many people rave about it that I was like, oh shall I, shan't I? And then this one came out and then I thought I don't need this either because I prefer warm tones, but then I heard lots of good reviews on it. so. I just thought I need to try this and maybe it would be helpful to you if you're thinking of buying it, if you can see the two together to see which one you might prefer. So let's take a look at them. So here's the packaging and here, this one is the original. And these shades are described as Mario's Ride or Die shades. Inspired by human skin tones from light to deep. And here with exactly the same box and exactly the same packaging is the brand new Neutrals palette. Described as a first of its kind neutral toned eyeshadow palette with 12 creamy buildable shades. So here are the two of them together, the new one and the old one. So I think you can see here there isn't an exact match for any of the shades in these so they definitely are different and you can see an awful lot more warmth in this which is why I would be drawn to this because I'm always drawn to warm shades but I've seen a lot of people with my skin tone really looking beautiful with cool tones and preferring cool tones. So I don't know if it's just because I like those colours around my home or I don't know what it is. So I thought it'd be really fascinating to try a look with both. I'll do a look with cool on one eye, warm on the other, just so we can see which one looks better on me. I thought that'd be really interesting. And before I get into each palette, I'll just show you the palette which stopped me from buying this. And this is the Viseart palette. So this is the Neutrals palette, this is the one which sits on my desk all year round and if you see it compared to this, I mean there are definitely differences. This one has cool tones along the bottom, the Viseart, and then it has the very warm ones in the middle and then on the top it has the very pale ones which are obviously very good for brightening. So I think there's there are differences here aren't there? there I, I'm still more drawn in all honesty to the Viseart, I know I am, but this one We'll see, I mean it does have the sort of warm reddish tone, but not quite as this one here, this reddish one here is my favourite in the in the palette really. And the white here I use all the time for a rescue colour if I have a problem or for inner corner pop or for underneath the eyebrow. And this black here is perfect for eyelining, or this darker brown is too. So I, I adore this one, it's my number one. So if you look at the new Neutrals palette from Mario compared to this Viseart, you see how the bottom row of the Viseart does have a similar um, grey tone to the one in the Mario palette, similar black, similar white, creamy one. There are a few crossovers here, so this is a bit of a mash of the two I'd say. So with Mario you're getting more options, that's the difference. So it depends whether you think you need them and maybe there's a colour in the Marios that you think are just perfect that this Viseart doesn't offer. This is the Patrick Tarr, this is the Dimension 3 palette, these two are the two creams. I've only actually recently got this, again because of all the hype I was avoiding it but I've got it. And you can see here how the row here is cool tones and the row here is warm tones. So again a bit like with Viseart, it's a bit of a mash of the two Mario ones. So if you look here at the new Neutrals palette, there are some similarities. If you look at the cool row on the Patrick Tar, but there's definitely a lot more cool options here, I would say. So if you're a cool fan, I think you're definitely going to prefer this neutral one compared with Patrick Tar. And here we have the Mario Original Master Matte Palette. They are quite different actually, aren't they? 
If you would like any specific swatch comparisons between any of these shades, please let me know. I'll be happy to do that for you. I can do it on Instagram and I will share it to shorts videos here on YouTube. So first I'll do some swatches for you of this new Neutrals palette. Starting with the top row we have Soft Cream, which you can't really see at all on my skin tone, and then we have Peach Nude, which again you can't see on my skin tone, which you would really expect. And then we have Neutral Sand, which you can sort of see, and then we have Muted Beige, which you can see. So exceptionally light on my skin tone, those first four. And continuing with row two, we have Neutral Taupe, Medium Tan, Pale Mauve, and this one is described as Mario's Favourite Brown. And the last row starting with Greyish Brown, then Intense Cool Brown, then the Cool Blue Grey, lastly Intense Black. There we have the entire Neutrals palette on my arm here. You can see it's very cool toned, which isn't drawing me in, which I didn't expect it to because I like warm tones. So on my other arm, I'm swatching the original palette. So starting with soft white, again, not visible at all on my hand. Then we have warm sand, which you can see a bit. Then we have warm cream and we have warm tan so the top row of this showing up a little bit more apart from the first and moving on to row two we have warm ochre neutral brown sorry i can't do this very well with my left hand so bear with me warm terracotta and a warm medium brown and the last row we have the rich red brown Deep Warm Brown, Deep Cool Brown, and Intense Black. So here is the original palette fully swatched, not very tidily because I was using my left hand which is a bit of a disaster. <laughs> and then we have the two together. So we have the neutrals here and we have the original here. So Cool, Warm. Not a huge difference is there. Now one thing I noticed straight away here was a difference in formula. If you look at the two of them, I don't know if you'll be able to see it here, but just from swatching these, because I haven't used them yet, you can see here with the new one, you can almost see my fingerprint in some of them, whereas you can't on this older original one. And that is because the original is matte, his Pro Matte formula, which is not as creamy and buttery as the new one. The new one is definitely a lot more buttery like I said it's got more of a creamy formula which I know is more popular and if you did get the ethereal eyes palette which I did actually that was one palette by Mario which I got pretty much as soon as I could from the US I didn't wait for it to come to the UK because look at it it's absolutely beautiful and if you haven't tried it these shimmer shades are incredible but the mattes in this and this this palette here is a mixture of cool and warm and the mattes in this are the same formula as this new Neutrals palette. So I know that these mattes were very popular. So maybe the Neutral palette will be exceptionally popular for that reason. And I'll just pop these side by side in case that's helpful to you. So here we have the Ethereal Eyes and here we have the new Neutrals to see if you think the mattes are in any way similar. And there certainly are similarities but not a direct match. I don't think there's a single colour in all three palettes. It's exactly the same. And here it is alongside the original Master Matte palette. Again, there are definitely some similarities, but not exact. Now, one thing I'm confused about with these is the cost, because these are $50, and I'm ordering them here in the UK, and that at the moment, with the current rate, is £39. But I was still charged £50 for each. So I don't really understand why. It should surely be a bit less. How can it be the same for both? I don't know. If anyone has the answer to that, I would love to know because I was a bit confused about that. And if you are thinking of getting this now from the UK, I don't know if it's going to be available here yet. I've bought this directly from Mario's website and I paid £17 delivery, so it's quite a lot. But what I would say is it arrived within three days of ordering. So exceptionally fast, but not cheap. 
so these usually will come over here. I know with ethereal eyes they did take a long time. I think they might come to Sephora f um, first. So in a few months time they might be here, maybe sooner, I don't know. But at the moment as I'm filming this I don't believe it's available in the UK. So you would need to pay the £17 postage and £50. <laughs> And for both of these looks today, I'm going to be using this set here from Sonia G. Each brush is numbered, so I will try and refer to them as I use them. This is the new set from Sonia G that launched only a few months ago. It was currently, it is currently available on the Beautylish. It went out of stock and it's back in. I have to say that I am extremely happy with this set and I'm using it constantly at the moment. I'm able to do everything pretty much. I don't have to dip into other brushes hardly at all. So highly recommend this set it's a big investment they are not cheap but they are fabulous and this is called let me just check Kayaki Kakashibo I hope I've pronounced that correctly sorry if I haven't but yeah check these out on Beautylish if you'd like to invest in brushes that will last you ages I mean they will last you if you look after them years and years and years and for me this is what really gives you the perfect perfected look that's easier to apply it's if you have the right brushes and for me Sonia G is one of the all-time greats when it comes to brushes so I, I'm really enjoying these. So I'm going to start with the original Master Matte palette with my first look on this eye. Now, I don't want to over complicate this because I want to make this a very easy everyday look so I can be quite realistic in how these palettes cut can work for me and for you if you're choosing them. So I'll do two looks with this on this side. I'm just going to go with two very simple colour mixes that I think I'm immediately drawn to so I can see when I compare the two which one I prefer. So using my T3 brush I'm going to go into this one here. So this one is called Matte 4. A lot of kickback, a lot. I'm just going to start this here. I'm expecting this to be very light, going by the fact I couldn't see it on my hand. Match. I'm taking this into most of my crease. I'm going to stop about here. Straight away it's very, very easy to blend. And I really like that shade actually. Just run a little bit underneath as well. And using the T4 brush, I'm going to go into this one here, which would be matte 5, I presume. Huge kick back. And I'm going to start placing this here in my outer V and just meeting that shade that I started with. So basically in the crease, but just a bit deeper. Sorry, this would be matte 8, not matte 5, because I've gone to the end matte in the row, not the first. And using T1, I'm going to go into this reddish brown here. So this one is matte 9. I'm drawn to this because in the Viseart palette, it's the reddish brown that I absolutely love. This one isn't quite as red as the Viseart one, to be fair. So I'm using this as a sort of liner, bringing it up into a small little wing and starting to deepen up the wing, really. I don't want to totally fill the outer V with this, but I'm going to take quite a bit of it and I'm going to start bringing it across the first third of my lid. I'm switching back to the T4 brush now, which is a more fluffy brush, just to try to blend out this area here. And just with T4, I'm going to take a bit of this creamy matte and I'm going to run this across the top now, just to sort of blend out the edge and soften it a bit. These really are very easy to work with mattes, they blend together beautifully, they're very user friendly. And using T1, which is a flat brush, I'm going to take the lightest shade in the palette and I'm now going to fill in the rest of my lid. I'm going to just pat this here. I'm going to put the same shade just here underneath the eyebrow, it works quite well there. I'm going to use BK Beauty 207. So I'm changing the brushes slightly because this is the only brush that I think works for this properly. Taking the lightest matte to try and make more of a pop of colour here. I'm using exactly the same shade as I did on the eyelid obviously, but I just think this brush, the way it's shaped and the way it's so dense is just perfect for this. So I'm going to use my Charlotte Tilby eyeliner brush. I go into the black 
I'm going to tight line up against the lashes with this. I'm just using the T2 brush to just blend that out and make it a bit smooth. So there is look one using the originals. And the reddish brown, I don't really like it, but I don't like it as much as the Viseart in all honesty. But I do like this overall look. Now going into the neutrals palette, I'm going to go for quite a similar look, but obviously using this palette. So I'm going to start with this one here, which is the fourth in the palette. Again, a lot of kickback with this. I'm going to start here like I did with the other one. I'm not expecting to see this as much. I'm doing exactly the same sort of eye look using similar shades. You'll be able to see the exact difference. So here I have this very similar shade, so not a lot of difference at the moment. And then using T4, going into this one, which is the 8th. Yeah, the 8th in the palette. Going to do exactly the same as before, bringing this slightly into the outer V and bringing it round to meet this one here. This one immediately seems to be quite a lot more pigmented than the one in the original palette because they don't look particularly different in depth. But look at that, a lot more depth. Without adding more to the brush, I'm just running a little bit underneath. And using the T1 brush, I'm going to go into the deepest brown. So like with the originals, I went into the deepest reddish brown. This one is described as an intense, cool brown. So I'm going to run this underneath. And soon it is intense. And bring it up. And using my T4 brush with a bit more of this on the end, I'm just going to start blending this into my outer V and bringing it into the first third of my eyelid, as I did with the reddish brown on the other side. Now, I am finding with this new one that the blending process is much quicker, just a bit easier. Not that the other one was particularly hard, but this one is definitely better. So it is that new formula working together very nicely. I'm going to go into this here, the second one, so matte two. Using the T4 brush I'm just going to look around the edges of the whole look to try to soften the edges of that. And now using the T1 brush I'm going to take this over the rest of my lid, so starting on the inside, bringing it up and then patting it across here. There really is a lot of kickback with these powders, so you do need to be careful. This lightest matte is showing up a bit more on my eye, but then that might be because the outer colours are that much darker, so it's more obvious. I'm back with the BK207, doing exactly the same for the inner corner. I actually really like this one for the inner corner. Probably as much as my Viseart actually, and it's very good under the brow too. And using my Charlotte Tilbury eyeliner brush again, I'm going to use the black to line. And I am finding the formula of this better, even with the liner, because I did need to go in with a blender because it wasn't just blending out quite as softly and smoothly with the original palette, but using this neutral palette, I don't think I really need to. It sort of blends itself, so I definitely prefer the formulas with this neutrals one. So these are the finished looks now with mascara on. So warm, warm side, neutral side. So the question is, which one do I prefer? And strangely, now I see the two together, it is the cool tone one. I actually prefer it quite a lot. So maybe I've just been drawn to warm colours because I like them in my environment. <laughs> but I do know that reds and bronzes tend to really complement blue eyes, and I do like it on me, but I definitely prefer this one. I preferred the formula, I preferred the application, I preferred everything about it in all honesty, I prefer the look of it, but I haven't tried out a different look, although I have actually gone for my favourite sort of shades in both, so this is the one I would have expected this to win. It would be quite interesting to try it against my Viseart though, I don't know if it could beat that, but I really like this look, so I'd love to know what you think. 
look number one, which one do you prefer on me? And if you were going to buy either of these palettes right now, which one would you choose? So please press pause and let me know which one right now would you be buying before I move on to look number two, which could change your mind. So I haven't removed any of this, it's actually day two. So I've just gone for the same top and the same base makeup, roughly, so I don't look too different because my eyes won't tolerate me doing two looks in one day at the moment. So I'm going to now go in for my second look using the original Master Matte palette. And using T3, I'm going to start with the same shade I started with the first. So this is the fourth one, Matte 4. And using the T4 brush, I'm going to go in with this one. And this one would be the Matte 7. I'm going to be taking this just like I did with the other look to meet the crease colour I started, so the two blend together. And I'm going to run it underneath the eye too. And this shade is described as a warm terracotta. So we're still getting a little bit of the red, but this is now the lighter shade, not the deeper shade, whereas yesterday my deepest shade was the more reddish brown. The way that I'm working with these palettes basically is going with three main colours. Obviously I am using others to do things like line and brighten, but my first shade for this area here is coming from this row, and my second shade is coming from this row, which is taking this area here, and my third shade is coming from this row, which is going to be for deepening and smoking out the outer V and that's exactly how I'm working with the neutrals palette as well. My deeper shade I'm going to go in with this one which is actually described as a cool tone. This is matte 11 and it's called deep cool brown. So I'm taking this under the eye up into a slight wing and across and using the T3 brush with a tiny bit on it I'm going to just smoke this out across here. Being careful because this is a very strong colour for me. Excuse my voice. I'm taking a little bit of matte too, just going around the edges to soften them a little bit. And now using my flat T2 brush, I'm now going back into matte too. And now I'm going to pat this over the remaining part of my eyelid, so basically two thirds. And bring it in to meet the smoky shade. And as with the other looks, I'll be using the BK207 brush to go into the lightest shade with a pop of light here and then under the brow. And again, I'm going to line with the black powder using my eyeliner pencil from Charlotte Tilbury, just like I did with both of the other looks. And to finish this look, I'm going to go in to matte four, which I started with. I'm going to run this just along the bottom, just to soften up the deep brown a bit. So that's my second look using the original Master Matte palette, and they are warm colours. Apart from here, we have more of a cooler brown. So maybe showing you can achieve a similar look with the original palette as you can with the new one. But obviously this does have warmth. I think you could achieve a similar look with this palette if you were to start with this colour and then go into this one as your second and then deepen up with this one. I do think you would pretty much end up with the same look. So there's two looks you can probably achieve. They're not identical because the shades are slightly different but I think they would be quite similar. So now using my T3 brush and starting with matte 4 again. With the neutral palette this time I'm going to start here. And next I'm going into matte 7 which is described as a pale mauve. And using the T4 brush, I'm going to take this to the outer V like I did with all the other looks and underneath here. This shade is very light, not very pigmented at all. So when you mix it with the shade I've used, the matte 4, matte 4 is muted beige. I'm not really seeing much difference between the two here. I just dipped into matte 5, which is a neutral taupe, just to see if I can get a little bit more colour from that because I will be going in with a deep shade, but I would like a little bit more. I think that's better actually. So this is matte 5, neutral taupe. And now using the flat T1 brush, I'm going to go into this one here, matte 11, the cool blue grey. I'm going to run this under and then bring it up into the outer V. 
to try to smoke out and deepen up the outer corner. Really like that shade, it's lovely. I'm now using the T4 brush to really spread this into the LTV more and blend it out into the other shades. And as with all the other looks, I'll be taking this roughly to one third of the eyelid. Just to there. I love this shade, you know. I'm going into matte too, just to go around the edges and soften them out a little bit. I'm using my flat T2 brush, going in with this lightest shade and taking this all over the eyelid. All over the remaining eyelid, should I say, because obviously I'm stopping by here and just blending it into the grey. And my BK207, just to do that pop in the corner and under the brow with exactly the same matte 1 lighter shade. And now just lining with matte 12, the intense black, using my Charlotte Tilbury liner brush again. I'm only lining the upper lid for this look for both sides. I didn't use the black under here because this brown was deep enough and I'm not going to use the black here. I want to stick with this grey because I don't want to take away from it really. So I'm just using it really to darken up here and tight line the lashes. So I've just gone off camera and done my mascara so that's my two finished looks. So here we have a look with the original Master Matte palette and this one with the neutrals. So this one is sort of cool, warm mixed together and this one is definitely very cool. Although I would say that Matte 4 is slightly warm here. So it's a little bit of a blend of cool and warm I think. So the neutrals are not completely cool but they definitely have much cooler tones. So now to decide which one I prefer again and looking at it I honestly don't know if I can decide between these two. I really, really like both of them, which surprises me because I've used a cool tone here and a cool tone there. So maybe the lesson I've learned today is I actually do maybe even prefer cool tones on me. So maybe I should start looking down the line of cool tones more for my looks and stop focusing on warm ones all the time. Yesterday after the first two looks I did, I showed the looks to my son and my husband and asked them to tell me which they preferred. And my husband preferred the warm look and my son preferred the cool look. So <laughs> I'd love to know what you think. But I do know I love both. I particularly love this grey shade here that comes with the new neutral palette. But I'm going to call today a draw. So if we add that with yesterday's look, the neutrals palette is just about one because it won yesterday and it's drawn today so close but I do think I prefer it which is a real shock for me. So both of these palettes have been beautiful to use and how do I feel about buying them having held back as long as I did on this one and I'm going to say really in all honesty I didn't, I didn't need this and if you have the Viseart or you have the Patrick Tarte or you have a neutral palette that has warm shades in it that you enjoy I don't think there's anything about this that says you need to buy it. I think the Viseart formula is better. I think the colour choices are better. You do have more colour options in this, so obviously if you're looking for a broader range of shades, then you might prefer this. But then Patrick Tarr as well is another good option. So I think the only thing this has over any of those is that there's just more of them in the warm neutral sort of shade option. So I would not personally get this. But this one, which has really surprised me when this launched, I was not remotely interested. I was like, no, I'm not going to bother. And I just, I don't know, I caved, as I said, because I kept seeing all these different reviews and thought, I've, I, maybe I need to give it a go. And I'm delighted I've given this a go because I think the formula is fabulous. I loved working with the formula. Most of all, I think that really struck me how really easy it is. So you could just, I would personally take this and maybe one of my single shimmer shadow pots and that would give me so many nice looks, so many easy nice looks that I could really enjoy. And what's really surprised me as well is that they had the cool shades in this, I think they really suit me. So I'm quite pleased maybe this is a new start for me in the way I do my makeup. So thank you for that Mario. But I did not expect to like this and I certainly didn't expect to be telling you I think you should get this. But if you don't have a cooler toned neutral palette. I highly, highly recommend this. It's beautiful. And I think I'll now be placing this with my Viseart together in my top drawer rather than putting this one away. 
and these two can work together as the ones I pull out when I need these sorts of shades because these formulas are very reliable. I'll be able to look back into this anytime I just need one of these for just under the eyebrow, in a corner, rescue shades if a colour's gone out of control, a bit like the one I use in the top row here with Viseart, but I think they're going to serve a similar purpose for me. Now obviously with Viseart I do love having the orange in this, which you just obviously wouldn't get with this cool tone, which is why I'd love to have the two together. But it would be interesting, wouldn't it, to try the grey look in this palette against this and maybe the orange in this against the orange of the warmer matte, master matte palette so maybe that's a, another video for another day let me know if you'd like to see that and I'll give and maybe I'll give it a go and you can see what you think but yeah I think these two have different things to offer so I do think I will be keeping them together so I'm really pleased actually really pleased I did not expect to be so if you're thinking of buying either of these palettes, I really hope that this has been useful to you. Maybe you already have the original and you're wondering whether you need to get the neutral. And you might not like the way the neutral looks on me or you might think it won't suit you. So maybe this has helped you decide not to get it or maybe it's made you tempted to get it. Either way, I would love to know what you think. And I'd also love to hear your thoughts on which of these shades suits me best, which of these colour stories in this look and the previous look. I've really enjoyed doing this, I really have, it's been an education for me <laughs> and if you've enjoyed it too I would love it so much if you liked and subscribed below, that really does help my channel and I would love to see all of you for my next video. Take care everybody, bye! bye.